There you go. Okay. All right, President, we have a quorum. Okay. <clears throat> I, Mirish, for this day, ask that you grant us the wisdom and compassion to make the best decisions we can for our nation. Mirish. Meeting to order at 9.05. Okay, good morning. Uh, before us, we have our agenda with 11 items. Um, two announcements. First announcement is uh, IHS CEO, acting CEO is not available today. So uh, we'll scrap uh, number one. And I would like to make a motion to table number 11. Second. And we'll have a working session before we bring that forth. Motion to table item number 11 on the agenda, second by Tori Davey. A motion by Melissa Fisher, second by Tori Davey. Holmberg? Yes. Deborah Shrett? Norma Gourneau? Yeah. Ernest Littlemouth? Yep. Tori Davey? Yes. Donovan Limberhan? Yes. Silver Little Eagle? Yes. Auditors? Yes. <coughs> Melissa Fisher? Yes. Yes, motion carried. Are there any other announcements? I just wanted to mention the um, Big Water is a health and housing needs assessment planning session today and tomorrow. And they'll have a community meeting this evening. I think it's from six to eight. Yeah. Okay. Is that going to be at the casino too? <clears throat> and I guess kind of explain it in a little more detail. Um, it's a. Uh, it's to uh, gather information similar to uh, a census. Um, so that we can have better statistics for the housing authority to go by. Currently they're going by statistics from the counties and surrounding communities, which is not gonna give us the correct numbers since this place is so different. So um, I encourage everyone to go over there and attend that community meeting or, and, and all the program directors and all the, uh, well, basically everybody for the tribe that works for the tribe to go over there and at some point today and take part in it because it's very important. Yeah, I think everybody got invitations and all the programs too. Okay. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, Melissa. Um, item number two, Andy. I did send him an invite. He accepted, so I'm not sure why he's not here. Okay. Item number three, elderly update. She also said she would be here. Okay, item number four, NCT RSP, Freedom Forever. You can come up here. <laughs> yeah. I, have a, I just need a call. Okay. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Just a second. There's a chair there. Thank you. Um, while we get started, I have some Freedom Forever swag if you guys want some. There's cups, hats, beanies. And you know I want a cup. We're just, what are you talking about? Maybe after. What are you asking? What are you asking for? Give me a cup. You know I want a cup. <laughs> you guys might have to arm wrestle for it. Uh, <laughs> you only brought one cup for everybody to fight over. <laughs> nice. Hey, 
I asked Ray to set it up, but he said it in the council meeting stream. Is he coming? Right? Melissa, yeah. close that door. Yeah. Beast. Thank you. Daniel was gonna be here when his flight got delayed. Hey, I have a meeting coming up. Yeah. I don't know how to do your guys' this thing. <laughs> I was very proficient at no. um all right Daniel you're up on the big screen. Do you wanna see them? I can turn you around. I don't know what's going on. No? Anyways, okay, you can't see them, but they can see you, Daddy. Uh, oh. Morning. 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 <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and um, present that slide? <laughs> Might be a little easier to do it on that end. We have a whole slide deck for you guys. Just thick. Um, I don't want to let you on. Morning. Round two. <laughs> yeah. Morning. Okay. Um, so, Freedom Forever wasn't able to join today. Um, Devin really wanted to be here, but she had a, a loss in her family. And so we're kind of filling in just a little bit. We have a couple of things that uh, we wanted to say. 
on their behalf, but can't say too much because, well, we're not them. <laughs> um, let's see. Hang on. Daniel, I'm fumbling this. <laughs> That's all right. You want to go to the next slide? Sure. Okay. Um, so just looking at this, the dark green is where Freedom Forever is. So the tribe was able to pair with one of the biggest uh, solar companies. Go ahead, Daniel. You know a little more about the number. Yeah, and with the number of absence, we just wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, and it's really uh, that the tribe tables are one of the larger solar companies in the United States. Uh, they just opened the office in Montana after completing the first jobs. And so they are actively hiring in this region and have already uh, hired some, some local residents. The numbers at the bottom just show the millions of panels they've installed, your thousand homes they've done, and almost 1,000 factory installations so far. So it just uh, to show a bit of the color that I um, was able to work with. And then here's just a couple of pictures. Uh, Devin on the top is the program manager. She, um, the one that wasn't able to, to make it today to cancel her, her trip last minute, unfortunately. Uh, but she has been a uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated resource, one of the percent who been on the plan. Um, so not only are the department with the tribe, they have dedicated resources, and then they have hired uh, Laura Ford at the bottom, who's job is to pursue grant opportunities with um, tribes. And so uh, I would just say that they are not just a contractor coming in to do work. They have been inspired by the Northern Giant and are uh, eager to learn how to do this work respectfully and to uh, expand the, the type of support that they can provide in Indian country. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to me about Freedom Forever? You've worked with them pretty closely. <laughs> I'm going to stand up. It feels weird to sit and talk to you guys. <laughs> um, so Freedom Forever, Devin, Jessica, Josh, all of them, I think I mentioned a little bit last time, um, on how respectful and how careful around here, especially with one of our, I guess our, someone who holds, who holds pretty good status in our community. Um, they're, they, uh, if, if I can speak a little, a little on the fact that, you know, with everything that just happened, you know, with William and all that, I was really impressed on how they handled themselves. Um, when they found out, one of the first things that they asked was, how can we help? Um, what can we do? And I was able to help guide them in our ways. So, you know, I told them a little bit about the significance behind, you know, the baskets, why we burn our wood, why we, why we do things the, the way that we do. And they didn't hesitate to help out. Um, so that was... For me personally, that, that meant so much just because like there's not a lot of outside entities that'll do that. You know, they'll come in, do what they need to do, get their money and head out. And it, it just it made me feel good. And they were so thoughtful with the stuff that they got, the stuff that they, they gave the family. Um, it was, I was really impressed. I was really touched. I was made me feel good to be able to work with them. Um, Devin, she, she was here for a little bit during the first phase. Uh, was super excited to be here. She loves, she loves coming. <laughs> she loved how green it was and I was teasing her. I was like, wait till it's, wait till it's a little more brown. <laughs> Cause we had a lot of rain last year, but she, 
been put in the position that she's in. If the tribe has any sort of questions, she's the main point of contact for Freedom Forever. So that's, there's her email there. It's D, D Wait, D W A I T T, at freedomforever.com. Oh, I've, I've had a, a lot of really good conversations with this lady. And her first thing that she asked me was like, I don't want to disrespect anybody on tribal council. And <laughs> she's like, how can I make sure that I don't do that? <laughs> and I told her, I was like, as long as you be yourself. Um, she's super bubbly. I, uh, I'm hoping that later on in the bait in phase two, if the tribe decides to go with Freedom Forever, that you guys get to hang out with her. She's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, Laura Ford, I only got to sit down with her once, but her role in, in what she does at Freedom Forever is huge, like just specific to working with Native American communities. <clears throat> that shows me that Freedom Forever is <clears throat> really taking to heart um, the impact that they can have, the impact that just being respectful, you know, to us as you know, Native Americans is. Um, Devin wanted me to give those out, so probably afterwards, maybe I'll leave that box somewhere. There's all kinds of sweet stuff in there. Hi, <laughs> Daniel. Thanks, Danica. Uh, so just to speak to the, the first phase of the project, I know that um, Danica and Sunny shared with the council months ago some updates. Uh, all 15 students are up and running. This graph is from one of the uh, eight orders to run the system. And we're able to monitor these from afar um, and actually be able to see uh, which day are sunny, which days are less sunny, um, and we can see how well the systems are doing. And we can even diagnose issues with systems before the owner even knows. So it's exciting. We also installed some construction monitoring. So this actually shows the solar production uh, for one home. We're also uh, put some monitors on the, what, how much energy the home uses. And it's helping to get some insights on maybe more energy and, and, and how to pair it with things like solar um, more effectively. And so we've been learning a lot. Um, and uh, are eager to, to utilize these types of products. Um, and uh, Danica, Danica's been in here doing some training with these solar edge products. Is there anything you want to share about kind of your experience in, in this phase? Like, once we do these installs, we're going to be monitoring these systems for 20, 25 years. So it's a really good bad. So, this here, I know it just looks like a bunch of bar graphs, but on the side here, it shows um, it's kilowatt hours. And so, the systems that were installed are rated at 10 kilowatt hours. So, that means for one hour, that's what it can produce if with really good sunlight. But you can see the fluctuations and all the stuff I learned off their cool little training thing. <laughs> they have a whole academy dedicated to it. I can get all nerdy about it. You can ask Silver. I kind of went all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so you can look at them through the month, through daily usage, through lifetime. Um, when it gets lower here, I believe this is when we had some snow. And so there was a little bit of snow buildup. Um, the other cool thing about this is that we can add the participants onto it so they can monitor their own on a, it's the Solar Edge app. This thing is one of the coolest things I've been able to, able to figure out because I can see everybody's, all the, I put it on there, but it has names. <laughs> um, their daily production, they can all access everything from their phone. And he spoke a little bit on the employment, which is the, the, the consumption. What those are is that it hooks up to the circuit in your, in your breaker box. 
and it monitors how much energy is being used, how much power, how much electricity is being used by whatever appliance is plugged in. And it can let you know, like, if let's say you leave the house and you accidentally leave your oven on, there'll be a little notification that says oven left on. And the purpose of the consumption is to help educate everybody on how much energy they use, but also <laughs> if they want to upgrade their appliances, um, they can see which one is using more power. Um, I have it installed at my home. It, uh, it tells me that my sub panel takes everything. <laughs> But it's really easy to add with a working email. We can add people, add the participants so they can see this stuff on their end, so they can monitor their production. They can monitor their consumption, which is one of the things that we had uh, talked about in the beginning. Um, so to actually see it coming, pretty cool. It does take a few months for them to see anything in their bill. So we're getting to around the area where they're starting to notice the ups and downs. That's a whole nother slide that maybe we'll have next time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, once we hand you know everything over, once the tribe is ready to take on this responsibility, like we can help train up anybody to be able to look at this and know what they're looking at to see what's going on. And by far one of my favorite things, I check it at least two, three times a day. There was a point where we had one array that was that had a fried optimizer. And so an optimizer, has anyone looked at the arrays that were installed? Well, there's a little black box in the back of the solar panels. There's 40 of them. One of those fried, don't know why, wish I had a reason, but sometimes things just happen. But because that fried, I was able to learn how to go install it. So I was out there rolling snow, have pictures. <laughs> But um, it also, we were able to see which panel, which optimizer specifically was the one that was acting up instead of having to go and test each one individually. So that's the cool thing about the Solar Edge monitoring platform is that we can see it before we go out there. But go ahead, Daniel. Great. Thanks, Tamika. Mm -hmm. uh, as the phase one is closing down, we should be submitting their the final invoice here in the next day or so. Um, phase two, we uh, have been working with the Department of Energy to uh, reallocate the budget, modify the budget to do more residential homes. So the next phase has uh, commercial. Uh, three commercial sites in, in Busby, uh, tribal buildings, and then also uh, hopefully another 55 homes. Um, and so part of that process, there's, there's going to be a lot of things coming up in the coming weeks and months for us to be able to uh, move forward with this and get these installed this year. Um, but one of the first steps is to reopen the application process. That we had a handful of names left over from this process a couple of years ago, but we're expanding the program. And me has been working really hard to get that application ready to launch again. And then she'll be the one out there in the community uh, meeting with homeowners, uh, helping them understand the, system, the program, um, getting all of their paperwork for that. So that's, a, that's an important step. We, we are ready, we're ready um, for the green light to, to do that. Uh, Freedom Forever's already working on some contract updates uh, with the tribal lawyers for the next phase. Um, and then tomorrow, hopefully I get out of Phoenix and I should be there tomorrow. Um, we're going to do a site assessment of the Busby School, Head Start, and Water Pump. Those are the three locations that are designated um, to get solar. Uh, and then if you remember, there was a, a, a shared savings program. Um, and this was a pretty innovative piece that uh, was passed uh, by resolution uh, last fall. We were just starting the program. And it, it allows for the, the tribe, it, it actually sets up a, a third uh, party, uh, special purpose entity, 
to help handle those transactions, but basically to, to help collect some of the savings that the solar generates so that we can the try to be honest during those systems so you can have someone who's looking at those graphs and helping to repair things when things um, uh, are damaged or they turned off or need to be rebooted or replaced in 10 years or whatever the case may be. Um, that, that shared savings program is going to help make that uh, possible. And so uh, that system will be starting up this summer. Um, as of right now, those 15 homes that have solar, they are, they are retaining all of the savings. In that graph that we showed um, right here, it's showing 1.41 megawatt hours of production in, in the month of March. Um, so that's that's roughly $130 worth of savings that this homeowner got uh, for the month of March um, in the winter, which is not even the highest production times. Um, and so that homeowner is receiving that whole savings on their energy bill right now. And then um, when the program starts up, they can split that so that the tribe can, can start to retain some of the value and, and pay for the monitoring and the maintenance. So that's all coming up. Um, and uh, I've only got a, another short slide left, but I just thought um, I'd offer up to Amita again because she, she's been really working closely with all the homeowners uh, on the application process. She's done a lot of work to get it ready um, and just for the 15 codes. Um, so now that we're doing roughly 55 more, um, I don't know if, Daniki, you want to speak to your, your, your role in that or um, what that process looks like or anything like that? Sure. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned last time that we have a digital application and a paper application. Uh, I'm hoping that we can have a Dropbox here at the Tribe, so we can check that, I mean, however often you guys want me to. But, um, our thoughts behind it, the way we streamlined the app, I sent a, a draft <coughs> to Silver last week. Super simple, couple pages. Um, but when this launches, I'm hoping that I can get all the district reps to help me promote this. I want, I don't care if I get 300 applications, 400, I want everybody to apply. Because if and when the opportunity for more funding comes available, having that many people on deck would be more of an incentive for people, you know, for, for, grant, for grant monies, for funding opportunities. But as far as the application process goes, it's um, fairly simple. Uh, if, they, if uh, an applicant fills out a, a paper app, I'll upload it on the digital form. Um, they'll automatically get put into our, uh, our tracking system. Everything's, everything's almost all automated <laughs> except the upload process. And it's just, uh, I highly recommend everyone does the digital. It's a lot quicker, it has a timestamp because I think we covered the selection criteria before. Um, one of the deciding factors if someone is absolutely the same across the board is when they apply. So, but I mean, application is I think three pages. There's a contact page. There's a how you want to get in contact with us, how you want us to get in contact with you. And everything's just circle or simple information input. I mean, <laughs> Try to make it as easy as I could for everyone, because I know that there's some people who they like to be techie and be online. There's some people who prefer to do things physical, you know, with physical media in their hand, which is me. Um, <laughs> even though I have my phone and computer all the time, but uh, yeah. Does anyone have any questions about that? No, oh, but thank you for your work on this, because um, I I've seen the solar panels in, at different homes. And I think it's exciting. And then the more household we can serve, I think it's better for everyone. And so I appreciate what you're doing. 
I appreciate you all. I mean, without you guys doing the getting the grant and everything, like I wouldn't have this position. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to help anybody else in our community, you know? But thank you. Thank you. Um I think it's pretty cool. I don't want to nerd out again, so I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Oh. Yeah, she, she sort of mentioned the selection criteria. I'm sure it's been presented in the past, but we worked with Silver, the Sustainable Energy Committee, to make sure that the, the selection process is fair for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. really, we need to say we're hoping that everyone applies. And um, it, uh, William worked very closely. Uh, with indigenous energy and a, a new coalition of tribes, the Blue Plains Coalition, that applied for some money through the EPA. And fingers crossed, we'll be hearing back in the next couple of weeks whether there's enough money to do another 200 votes on the Northern China Reservation. So um, that, that would include batteries and energy efficiency. So uh, we're very excited about that. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I think we answered all the questions, Daniel. <laughs> all right. Good team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hang up now. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I'm plugged, so I might get notifications. Yeah, and then you get to save the box with me and then I can. Okay. Just let us know when the application. When you need us to. Yeah, when we need to help with the application process. Okay. Um, first, uh, I need it okayed by the Sustainable Energy Committee and the D. Would we um, have to pass it by resolution, the application? Um, and then. I would say the com at a committee level. You okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Item number six, Tiana.
Good morning, everyone. I have a resolution to present for um, BIA archaeologist funding. I'll go on ahead and read the resolution. It's a resolution of the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council authorizing funding to the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Historic Preservation Office from the DOI to hire an archaeologist to conduct culture surveys for uh, BIA projects. Also, before special projects that the BIA Forestry has been wanting to complete for several years now, and they applied for funding to get these projects completed. And one idea was to transfer money to TIPO to hire an archaeologist to get these pending projects completed so they can move forward with their, um, their logging projects, their harvesting projects, um, hazardous fields projects. And so the, the BIA only has one archaeologist for all uh, eight reservations right now. Their archaeologist is pretty constrained to uh, the amount of time they can dedicate to a tribe. So this is one of the mechanisms that we came up with to try to get um, these priority projects for the BIA completed. So um, therefore be it resolved, the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council accepts funding from the DOI BIA to hire an archeologist for BIA projects that will be administrated by the TIPO office. I'll make that motion to approve. I have a question. Have we missed this um, January 17th deadline? No, I, I was able to get my proposal in and um, Alicia uh, authorized the ASAP. And so I got it in on time. <coughs> she asked for the resolution, the budget, and the job description. So I attached the job description onto the packet. So that's the one I'll use when I do the advertisement for the archaeologist. Do you have one in mind? No. I'm hoping I can field good candidates. Um, if not, yeah, if not, we might have to go through uh, contracts through like an archaeological firm and see if they can um, bring somebody from their, their firm down to the reservation and have to probably make a contract with them for it. It's really hard to get um, people to want to come to work um, here since we're so isolated and there's not much housing or hotels or anything like that. So um, hopefully we get some candidates who are interested in will apply. Okay. Motion by Melissa Fisher to authorize funding to the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Historic Preservation Office from the DOI Bureau of Indian Affairs to hire an archeologist to conduct cultural surveys for BIA projects, second by Tori Davy, Melissa Lombear? Yes. Norma Gourneau? Uh-huh. Ernest Littlemouth? Yes. Tori Davy? Yes. Donovan Limberhan? Yes. The Little Eagle? Yes. Gwen Spotted Horse? <clears throat> yes. Melissa Fisher? Yes. Eight yes, motion carried. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you. Item number seven, Youth Council, Silver. Resolution of the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council, establishing the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Youth Council, approving the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Youth Council Constitution and Bylaws, and approving the Northern Cheyenne Youth Council's involvement with the Unity Network. Um, so this constitution that's attached it's very easy for like the youth to be able to, um, I, I guess, draft it themselves. But this is just a um, starting point when our first youth council is elected. And after that, they'll be able to change it the way that they'd like to. And then with the Unity Network, that's a national council that I would like our youth council to be involved with and it needs a resolution to be able to be um, I'm going to read the whole thing thing from the third whereas the future of the Northern Cheyenne tribe rests on the hopes and dreams of its young people therefore the well-being and empowerment of Northern Cheyenne youth is a high priority to the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council 
And whereas the youth of the Northern Cheyenne tribe represent a great natural resource, whereas today's youth of the Northern Cheyenne tribe will one day become leaders, whereas the youth need leadership training and experiences to better prepare them for these important roles, whereas the youth should be given the opportunity to bring about positive changes in the existing conditions on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, and whereas the, the young people between the ages of 13 to 20 should have a greater voice in matters concerning them, and whereas the youth through their collective action can serve as a catalyst to bring about more unity, harmony, and healing in the Northern Cheyenne community, and whereas there is a need for a mechanism which will allow for the distribution of information, coordination of activities, and sharing of resources, and whereas there is a need for interaction and communication among the youth representing the various schools and communities. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council declares that our youth's spiritual, mental, physical, and social well-being is the highest priority. It further resolved that the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council authorizes the formation of the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Youth Council to give our youth a greater voice and greater opportunities to develop as leaders. This organization will operate under the supervision and with support and encouragement from the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Administration, the Tribal Council, and the Northern Cheyenne Youth Advisory Board. Be it further resolved that the attached Northern Cheyenne Youth Council Constitution and bylaws are approved and be it finally resolved that the Youth Council is approved to join the Unity Network sponsored by the United National Indian Tribal Youth Corporation in an effort to bring about positive change in Native America. That's my motion. I give you a motion. <coughs> motion by Silver Legal to establish the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Youth Council, approve the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Youth Council Constitution and Bylaws, and approve the Northern Cheyenne Youth Council's invo involvement with the Unity Network. Second by Melissa Fisher, Melissa Lombear. I just have one question. On page six, <clears throat> section 1A, it says, five youth advocates mm -hmm. appointed by the tribal president. Yeah. But um, my recommendation is to have the president make just how we do our regular committee appointments. Yeah. Um, she's going to put out a... Yeah, we'll put out a poster today. Yeah. But maybe we need to... <clears throat> Clarify that, just so it's so we have representation like across the board. And so if you're going to do it by district, I mean, just the same process as we. Oh yeah, do the okay. Yeah, just so add language for each district of yeah. representative. Yeah, okay. that's my recommendation. I don't know if you guys. Are, <clears throat> are we going to have a at large, or is it just five? Um, I was just going to do five, okay. that, the regular amount for courts, so we could do one at large. Yeah. Okay. I will yes. <laughs> Norma Gorno. <laughs> Ernest Littlemouth. Yes. Corey Davey? Yes. Donovan Limberhan? Yes. Silver Little Eagle? Yes. Gwen Spotted Horse? Yes. Melissa Fisher? Yes. Eight yes, motion carried. Okay, item number eight, Norma. <laughs> um, you have before you a resolution approving a second amended contract for services with the Science Chestnut Law Firm. The Science Chestnut Law Firm has provided legal services to the tribe on a broad variety of ma matters since 1973. The current Science Chestnut contract, as amended, has an annual limit on fees that may be charged and an annual limit on out-of-pocket expenses that may be reimbursed. Based on the tribe's current su legal support requirements, the tribe needs additional services and wishes to increase the above annual limits that may charge under the current contract to 355K in fees and 120K in out-of-pocket expenses. 
This resolution means that we're increasing the legal fees for to 55, let's say 55,000 and out-of-pocket expenses for 40,000 for fiscal year 24. So my motion is that the Tribal Council hereby approves an amendment to the current Zion's Chestnut contract to increase its annual limit to 355,000 in fees and 120,000 in out-of-pocket expenses and authorizes the tribal president and tribal treasurer to take any actions consistent therewith. That's my motion. I'll second. Motion by Norma Gornall to approve second amended contract for services with Zion's Chestnut Law Firm. Second by Silver Little Eagle, Melissa Lombear. Yes. Norma Gornall. <laughs> Ernest Littlemouth. Yes. Tori Davey. Yes. Donovan Limberhan. Yes. Silver Little Eagle. Yes. When Spotted Horse. Yes. Melissa Fisher. Yes. Yes, motion carried. Item number nine. We have before you a resolution approving Excel's tribal capacity funding agreement for the purposes of protecting the Sand Creek Massacre site in the state of Colorado. November 29th, 1864, Colonel John M. Shivington and U.S. Cavalry of Colorado troops under the command of the U.S. War Department attacked without provocation the peaceful Cheyenne and Arapaho village of Cheyenne Chiefs Black Kettle and White Antelope and Arapaho Chief left hand at Big Sandy Creek to History Sand Creek. On reservations lands in the Colorado Territory set aside for the Cheyenne and Arapaho by the 1861 Treaty of Fort Wise and over 230 Cheyenne and Arapaho men, women, children, and elders were brutally massacred. Excel Energy, is developing a new energy transmission line across Colorado as part of their power pathway program, which could be as close as approximately 10 miles from the historic Sand Creek Massacre site and spur the development of energy projects along that line. Tribal representatives have worked to avoid any impact the transmission line or the associated development could have on the Sand Creek Massacre site to protect the integrity of the site landscape, the experience of visitors to the site, and their ability to understand and appreciate the historic and physical context in which the massacre took place, and most importantly, the cultural significance of the massacre site landscape to the Cheyenne and Arapaho people, especially descendants of the massacre victims, and that work is ongoing. <coughs> In recognition of the tribe's sovereignty, Excel Energy has offered the tribe funding used in the tribe's sole and unfettered direct discretion as set forth in the attached tribal capacity funding agreement. Tribal representatives involved in protecting the site from the above reference development believe it is in the best interest of the tribe to accept the tribal capacity funding agreement so that the funding may be used to protect the massacre site. So my motion is that the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council approves the attached capacity funding agreement and the tribal president is hereby authorized to sign the agreement. That the tribal treasurer is directed to set up a bank account for the deposit of funds to be paid under the grant agreement and that the funds shall be administered by the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer and spent solely for the purposes related to the protection and preservation of the Sand Creek Massacre site in connection with the proposed Excel Energy Transmission Line in Colorado and related energy projects. I'll second. I have a question. Um, the Culture Commission and the TIFL were not aware of this and they wanted to know if we could table it or move it to the next council meeting. 
because they they have questions on the one time grant and they didn't got up to the date with it. That's something we can do. What my understanding is that um, Otto and the attorney and William Waxalon had met with the energy company, and this is a one-time grant that they're going to use to fund the TIPO office. Now, if the Cultural Commission would like more money, I think they have other opportunities to get more money to do their projects. Yeah, they just wanted to, if we could move this to the next council meeting so they could have a, a kind of working session or a up-to-date for them, because usually they, they get... Um, up to date on stuff like this, but they weren't aware of this and they wanted to know if we could push it to the next council meeting so they could get well, there's information. A, right now there's a motion and a second already on the floor. Mm -hmm. Motion by Norma Gorno to approve Exile Tribal Capacity Funding Agreement for purposes of protecting the Sand Creek Massacre site in the state of Colorado. Second by Melissa Lombear. Melissa Lombear? Yes. <laughs> Yes, little mouth. Um, this is one time agreement of 50,000, and you now we went through this with the county commission. I think there should be a little more than 50,000 because they're a sacred site. I think we need to look at it a little more. Answer is no. As vice president, shouldn't you have been more involved in what was going on then? What's that? As vice president, shouldn't you have been more involved with... Well, the way I look at it, I think... So far, it's 50,000 for our sacred site. Can't switch line going through. So what is your vote? No. Okay. Tori Davey? Yes. Donovan Limberhand? Yes. Silver Little Eagle? Um, from my understanding, this already came across Tiana, right? And there's no interference with our secret site in Colorado. So, yes. Gwen Spotted Horse? No. Melissa Fisher? Yes. Six yes, two no. Motion defeated. Right. So, oh, I'm sorry. It's been passed. Passed. Item number 10 is me. A resolution approving being an application of op opioid settlement funds for treatment and rehabilitation services. <clears throat> I'll go to the sixth where asked. Thus far, the Northern Shine Tribe has been paid over one million from the settlements reached by with Johnson and Johnson and three primary distributors, as well as Tiva, Allergen, Walmart, Walgreens, and CVS. These settlements are restricted to specific <clears throat> identified specific uses identified in the settlement documentation and the drug and alcohol rehabilit rehabilitation services are an allowed use. Whereas the tribal council wishes to direct the principal amount of the funds to be safeguarded in a safe federal deposit insurance company, third bank savings account, or short-term one-year or less certificate of deposit <clears throat> that accrue high rate of return and to maintain and apply the earnings on these funds to drug and alcohol rehabilitation treatment services and, and that intake Integrate the Northern Cheyenne traditions provided by the Board of Health now. Therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council hereby directs and authorizes the Tribal President and Treasurer to ensure that the principal of the opioid settlement funds are in FDIC insured bank savings account or short term one year or less. Cert certificates of deposit that accrue high rates of in return of return. Therefore, be it resolved that the Northern Shine Tribal Council 
directs the tribal president and tribal treasurer to ensure that the earnings only on the principal amount of the settlement funds are transferred at least once per year to the Northern Shine Board of Health to be applied for drug and alcohol rehabilitative and treatment services at least in part based on Northern Cheyenne traditions. Be it further resolved that the, that the tribal treasurer reporting and writing on the status, principal, and earnings of these funds to the tribal council on a quarterly basis. And be it finally resolved that all future op opioid payments shall be safeguarded and applied to provide as provided in this resolution. That is my motion. I'll second, but I have a recommendation okay. for the be it further resolved. I don't think the responsibility should solely be with the tribal treasurer. I think it needs to be with, with the either the program or the, I mean the director of the program or the recovery. Okay. So the program director of recovery or and the health director. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'll amend my motion with changes. Health director. Yeah. Yeah. Motion by Melissa Fisher to approve safekeeping and application of opiate settle settlement funds for treatment and rehabilitative services. Second by Melissa Lomber. Melissa Lomber. Yes. Norma Gourneau? Uh -huh. Ernest Littlemouth? Yes. Tori Davey? Yes. Donovan Limberhand? Yes. Silver Little Eagle? Yes. Gwen Spotted Horse? Yes. Sure? Yes. Yes, motion carried. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and take the update from um, BIA. Andy? Oh, yeah, I've been getting that. <laughs> My wife's the same thing. Um, uh, good morning, Tribal Council. I'll, I'll try to be brief today. Uh, Councilwoman Victor made me aware uh, that you folks want to get over to the housing meeting. I got an invite myself, so I'm going to try to be making some time to go over over the next couple of days. Uh, first of all, I know I haven't been here in a while. Just wanted to uh, offer my uh, condolences concerning William um, to you folks and his family and surrounding community. Uh, the other thing too is just uh, hope you folks had a nice holiday weekend. I, uh, Councilwoman Fisher, uh, passed out a, a written report. Um, uh, I haven't been here in so long. I know IHS started. Uh, submitting written reports to the council. So I thought, well, we should be doing the same. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, I apologize about the formatting uh, on some of the uh, program sections. I'll make sure I get that corrected for the next uh, meeting. Um, but I'll, I'll go through it. I'm just gonna hit the highlights uh, in a matter of time. And I guess if you have folks have any questions or if you wanna follow up with me by phone call or Email, we can do that also. I'll just start with the uh, Realty. Um, one highlight I just wanted to hit was that uh, we still have our ongoing right-of-way project. I, I know it's been a while since we met with uh, Traco, uh, but that is still going on with uh, some expired right-of-ways. Um, we, we are working on, well, we completed the ones for, for Range and for uh, Bighorn Electric. And you know, determining like we talked about before, if those are our right-of-ways or service line agreements, we're going to be uh, sending out uh, letters. And I'm I'm hoping, you know, whenever at the tribe's convenience, we would be meeting again um, with Range, I presume, and possibly Bighorn Electric, like we did with uh, Traco, uh, concerning right-of-ways that have expired. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, the the fiber project that the tribe did. Um, I continue to be 
behind on the power curve with that, but I, I've spoke to uh, the president about that and Councilman Gornall, and I need to get a letter over here to the tribe. Um, so I, I just need to get that done and uh, communicate with the tribe uh, on that as far as moving forward. I'll just leave it at that for now until we get to that. Uh, the other thing also, uh, as far as realty is concerned, is the Rosebud Cut Across Road. Um, I'm aware that that's a project for the tribe. Um, I, I haven't uh, seen an application as far as right-of-ways that are concerned. I know a lot of that um, route isn't going to change, but some portions of it are, are especially on the east end uh, coming off of Highway 39. Uh, so I'm going to reach out. Um, I, I think I've already talked to the president and Councilman Gorno about this, uh, reaching out to transportation and communicating with them about that project, especially as far as easement goes. Uh, we've met with Range uh, already about it at the agency, Frank Miller. Um, he has the tribe specs on that project and, um, you know, is trying to get their work done prior to, you know, trying to get easements and get their work done prior to the construction project itself. So. Uh, I got a note in here for trespass. We just have some ongoing trespass challenges. Uh, most of that was due to last year, but I, we'll just continue to work on those at the agency. Uh, moving over to agriculture, um, we, we completed the, the first round. Um, we have a few stragglers for that. We, we sent out a uh, 10-day show causes for that. Just wanted to make the tribe aware. I, I, I seen this morning in the lockbox, the, the tribe's grazing permits are in there. I know that was something I was communicating with uh, uh, Councilwoman Charette about and Brandon Small. Um, I didn't realize until recently that the uh, when you send it in the mail, it, it's kind of a slow process. It can, I had one operator came in and he just kept asking, you know, why why is it my payment been <laughs> received it? But it took about three weeks from when he dropped it in the mail to get uh, where it gets sent, you know, out of state, and then it gets processed. Um, so, um, I think I mentioned, you know, on, on a few of those stragglers, we sent out 10 day show causes. There's only a few, but uh, um, trying to see if we can get those resolved as far as the first round is concerned. Um, the second round just closed on, on Friday. We did receive some applications. Uh, I I uh, had sent an email uh, to the tribal council um, that we, we were advertising for the second round as the grazing board. Um, just like the first round, I'm, I presume we might get some stragglers that'll, that'll come in, um, uh, even though it closed on Friday. Uh, just like the first round, we'll just forward those over to the grazing board for their consideration. Um, the uh, compliance checks, GIPRA measures, I, I know, uh, Woman Lone Bear, I sent you an email. You reached out to me on on that uh, prior. Um, Merle went back to uh, range, but we're going to try to see if we can continue to um, do compliance. You know, and uh, you know at least try to meet our our GIPRA performance measure goals uh, for FY twenty four. Um, uh, we we had some uh, hay trespass and appeals. Um, those are, um, I think, pretty much buttoned up. You know, they went to the region. The regional director made a decision on those. And um, the only thing to that, I, I think I want to mention as far as that realty goes, is that I'm working on getting a, a trespass training for the agency uh, through the regional office. Um, you know, some of the letters that went back that even came to the tribe on those appeals um, didn't give a lot of an explanation, especially to us at the agency. but. I just want to see if, if there's some things that we, we did wrong or we can correct um, that they make us aware of that and then we can get training or TA from them um, to learn from it and uh, do better. Uh, forestry, it's mostly business as usual there. I know Lonzo has been working with uh, Climate Trust, Madeline Montauk, uh, the tribe's uh, contractor. I just wanted to mention, um, I'll, I'll reach out uh, Madam President and See if I can get another update through the regional director. I know the tribe has been waiting on their carbon agreement to, to be an answer on their tribe's carbon agreement. In the initial letter that was sent to the director, I, I think the tribe pretty much had the process flushed out already that it needs to go to the director. But 
the last uh, update that I got on it, um, it needs to be reviewed by the central office solicitor. That's the first step. So um, I did talk with the president a few weeks ago about it and suggested, that, hey, maybe maybe send another letter uh, out to Asia or, or Central. But the regional office is aware. I will reach out to them even again today to see if I can get an update. I know it's at Central office, but uh, the last update I got, I wasn't sure if it's been reviewed yet or not, but I know that's something the tribe and the contractor wants to um, move forward on. Um, fire, I know we had ADs come back on, trying to get ready for, for fire season. Um, social services, uh, normal day-to-day -day business there. I apologize, I should have had, um, it's been so long. Uh, we have a new, uh, maybe the next meeting, a new uh, social worker there. I might've mentioned him before, Clayton Baxter. And he's he's um, trying to get him into a temporary promotion as the acting uh, supervisory social worker. But I'll have him come over and attend the, the next meeting. Um, uh, one of the challenges I just wanted to say about social services is obviously it's understaffing, but communication. Um, so in the past, I was made aware that before COVID, the, the agency used to facilitate CPT meetings, the child protection team meetings. We're going to start doing those again at the agency. So we'll be reaching out to the tribe, tribal programs and OJS. Um, I'm not sure if IHS participates in those also, but from what I understand, you know, they were really good meetings for network and communication. So we'll be working on uh, doing those again. Uh, administration, HR, um, the deputy superintendent, maintenance worker, supervisor, secretary, and could also, or custodial worker, sorry. Um, those have all been submitted to HR. I know I've been saying since I've got here, we've had a discussion about the deputy. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm hoping very soon that's going to be uh, advertised uh, out on USA Jobs. Um, the maintenance supervisor worker also, like I said. Um, we did hire um, a rangeland management specialist, uh, a social services rep, and a staff assistant. They haven't started yet, but we've, we've hired them. They've accepted the position. We're just waiting on a... EOD or, or a start date. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention is a, is a realty specialist position. On USA Jobs, uh, and I guess I know we're, we're live on the YouTube for the listening public also, um, the, the Bureau or HR, I guess, in central office, uh, they've taken a different approach recently to, to uh, um, realty specialist positions. Um, there, if you look on USA Jobs right now, there's a realty specialist uh, position that I would say is, is advertised nationally. What the Bureau is trying to do is backfill and fill vacant funded positions uh, for realty, specifically realty specialists. Um, on the advertisement though, it doesn't specify a location. It just says, I, I can't remember the right words verbatim, but just the, the location after selection. Um, the agency was made aware on March 11th, March 12th, that uh, the agency was being considered for this position because we were on a list for a data call of having a vacant funded realty specialist position, um, which I wasn't aware of and I didn't think was accurate based on our current approved org chart. Um, well, that's, that's not correct. Our current approval org chart, we just approved a, a realty specialist, a, a, a 911, uh, just a, a few weeks ago or almost a month ago. Anyways, but the point I guess I'm getting at is that we weren't aware that um, a position was being considered at, at the agency okay, for a realty I'm... specialist. Once we became aware, um, we did send uh, an email over to the tribe. We sent it at the agency as did the region. We put it on our bulletin board. Outside of um, that, there's not much I can do as far as USA Job is concerned. But the reason I'm mentioning it today is because it is a ongoing cert. Like I said, they're trying to fill these positions around the country. And uh, when we were asked for a response, I said, well, I think it's important to try to make it more public that we do have a position available at the agency. So that's why we sent that over to the tribe, put it on our bulletin board. 
and I had asked if we could, you know, give it a few more weeks. So it provides an opportunity if we're trying to make it more public for, for people to apply. Um, uh, Self-determination, I just wanted to, you know, as far as funding, you know, there's almost, a, it's 935,000 available to the tribe. Just wanted to, uh, if you folks are interested in a drawdown there, Maybe it's not as urgent as uh, as it was with uh, the CR looming uh, last month, but I'm glad I'm glad uh, you know Congress um, the president signed off on approving a budget for the year, so we don't have a CR constantly looming. So, um, uh, just some notes in there about reports. You know, I'll continue to coordinate with the president's office about that. Um, resolutions. Uh, one one note I wanted to make is that um, we did receive the the resolution for uh, 638 the range program uh, last week. I noted that I made the regional office aware of that. Um, those have been sent back to uh, um, Edina, and last week Alicia sent them back and CC'd the council. Uh, we'll be sending a, a follow up letter this week uh, to the tribe uh, just to start the process. Uh, as far as I guess proposal budget negotiation, so um, just wanted to mention that in today's meeting, and obviously making the region aware um, as far as negotiating with the the tribe to contract the range program. Um, carryover funding, uh, we were just if you look at the ones that are in bold, it looks like we're waiting on some proposals still on some carryover funding that we've made available uh, to the tribe. Uh, there was one other one that I wanted to mention. I know I just did approved an EFED late last week for, for Buffalo funding. Uh, Councilwoman Charette has reminded me that a few times in Brandon because I told her we were trying to identify some funds, so we did. Uh, so we'll be uh, getting that processed and obviously you know, wait for the same process from the tribe, you know, resolution, budget and stuff. Um, just for, for number one, the Native Act. Yes, ma'am. Um, did you send the um, letter for the proposal um, to me, and I I sent it down to Colton. Okay, and then Mariah. Okay, perfect. We're redoing the craft center. That's why I asked. Okay. All right. Great. Um, one more. I have a question. <clears throat> um, did was there anything available for the enrollment? department i i can check uh okay because i thought um they were sending a proposal down um i did talk to um wallace and joetta because they have a position that needs that's doing the etc funds are the etc ids and um they need a position funded okay and so that person is um, needed in that department, and I told them to get a proposal um, email to you guys. Okay. I'll follow up. Follow up. With, the, I'll follow up with them too as well. I'll follow up with Alicia and get back to you, Councilman okay. and, and Wallace. All right. Thank you. The president. Okay. Um. Facilities, um, we, you know, we've been trying to keep up with work orders. We've been trying to do what work <coughs> we can with um, with uh, vacant homes at the agency and the staffing that we have available. Um, if I had all the money in the world, I'd do some serious renovations, but. Uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon, but I just think uh, <clears throat> the minor renovations are going to be really helpful for recruitment or retention of agency staff. Um, wait, wait, can you stop there for a minute? Yes, ma'am. That um, just so that everyone understands that if the detention facility has issues right now, we're not going to be able to use it to house temporary um, <clears throat> tribal members there. So it's a big issue. And Are they not housing 
youth there right now? No, well, they're well, they're they're holding them and then they're moving them on to different facilities. But they're using the facility as a holding. Well, still assigned to them. But I, I probably guarantee it's not for very long. If it's in need of a new boiler, then it's not warm enough, right? Um, I, I need to go back and check. I think, I don't know if I'm getting it mixed up with the youth service center, but I, I think there's two boilers in there, unless I'm getting it mixed up with YSC. I don't know if you remember, Norma. But either way, even if it's the youth detention facility, they need boilers or if it's the adult, all it does is delay the tribe being able to house any of their uh, inmates here. I feel like it's retaliation. There's just one thing after another. I know that's not on you, Andy, but. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's no. I, I, I mean, Councilwoman Woman Gorno mentioned that to me before. And the, the facilities are old, um, especially the, the adult jail. Uh, Councilman um, Davies, um, it is being used by OJS. Um, not, you know, up to full use, I guess. I don't want to speak for OGS, but um, obviously with the Youth Service Center being not used right now, I mean, it, it impacts that also. But I, I'm not going to disagree with you, Councilman Gorno. It does. It, it's, it's something that you don't have community members being housed here locally um, in Phil. Um, we're responsible for facilities at the agency, um, the, the facility is, is old. Um, one thing I'll go back and regroup with my staff about or the region is that, um, you know, we need to look at, you know, some serious, um, changes to the adult facility, get it to the capacity so it can be used. It needs, um, to, be, it needs to be prioritized. Number one, like. Put it at the top of the list because it's <laughs> every single thing that that I'm here for the tribe in general, whether it be uh, programs, uh, the people, stems from that lack of lack of having a, a facility to house people that are doing lesser crimes. I mean, we can't even they just they just let them go. Don't even slap them on the wrist. They just let them go. So. It's a huge problem. If it wasn't, if it was like that anywhere else, I mean, you'd have bedlam. It would be no, no city or anywhere would have control over their situation. It's been, I've been on council for a year and a half now, and it's the same old song every time we hear about it. And like, like you know, as they alluded to, we know it's not your your problem. I mean, it's not you causing the problem we know where the problem's coming from um, but i think instead of just just recommending things I, I think that the one thing that should be recommended is that it be number one top priority to get those facilities up and running i i would just like to make a suggestion too you know um you know you could pass this information up but why continue to put more money into this building when you know, why couldn't it be that number one priority that they look for funding to build something new? Because they put money into this building, something else goes wrong. And I mean, it's just, uh, it's just ongoing issues with this building that continue to hold, you know, restrict us from um, keeping inmates here. It's actually keeping us from providing or even even pushing the issue of having any kind of recovery or rehabilitation program for our tribal members. And that's huge. That is huge right now because of, well, for a lot of reasons. But, um, that's, that's one of my main concerns is that we cannot help our tribal members that get arrested um, Mentally, spiritually. Well, they're not even getting arrested. I mean, you got people that are getting picked up for intox that are getting dropped off at, at their grandma's house. You know, I mean, it, that's 
that is that that's not going to work. And and because they don't go to jail for that for that 24 hours to sober up or whether it's a you know another count like child endangerment whatever they get they're not getting the resources to be able to try and fight that addiction try to fight that 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 issue so there it's literally just just it's literally the definition of sweeping it under the rug it's it, we're, we're every 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 small crime unless you 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 get a DUI and i mean i've i've heard of instances where DUIs aren't even getting picked up because they have nowhere to house them and they don't want to transport somebody at two o'clock in the morning because they don't have anybody there to do the transport. And it's, it's just an ongoing thing. Um, you know, we need a adult pension facility. We need a juvenile detention facility. It should be number one priority. Bottom line. The burning shelter and the drunk can be there. That's right. That's right. The comparison for the cost for the transport, I mean, I'd like to see a budget of how much was spent on transports alone. I mean, especially when they're going to when they're going to Oklahoma. That that I mean, that's that's got to cost BIA some money, man. I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, I just bring that up because it is a, it is an for us. So if we could do what you know, talk to people that are. Okay. Are the decision makers that would help? Okay. Well, I'll I'll tell you folks. I'll make it a priority at the agency. Meet with my own staff, the regional director. But this is a priority of this council. Um, I um, I hear you loud and clear. It's a public safety issue. Well, I, I on a, to, uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay. Um, I wanted to, you to finish your uh, report before I ask um, the president and vice president a couple of questions. Okay. I just finishing up on detention. I know it's it's in the report here that the the youth uh, uh, service center is still scheduled to the roof to be replaced in May. Um, I know that's not a fast process. It's not currently being utilized, but. I'll, I'll say that it's a it's a good thing because it's been a long-standing thing with that facility. That facility isn't very old, but when I've been in meetings or looked at uh, some research on it in the past, you know that 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 roof out there has been band-aided over and over. And honestly, you know, I'll give credit to our AO. You know, was fired up. You know, and we start getting on these 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 calls with the region and 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 you know getting some central office staff involved and we finally got funding to replace the whole roof. So that's, that's a good thing for that facility. It's just that it, you know, it took time to get it, um, the, uh, run through the process, you know, and get a contractor secured, but that is still scheduled to start in May. Um, probate just, uh, mostly day to day business to there. I guess one note to that is, uh, talking to Jermaine, um, just having a concern about the backlog. So I'm not sure, you know, I'm gonna start with my boss, but you know, like with OHA, um, I think everyone is aware that um, the process can be slow, but I'm just gonna try to do some follow-up and checking on on backlog. And you know, when when are we gonna be getting some some hearings scheduled, um, you know, for, for folks, you know, family members, members that have, uh, folks have died. Uh, the, other, the only other thing I had was um, the USGS LIDAR meeting. I think that's scheduled for next week, right? Is that next yeah. Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, I'll be here. Um, uh, the other thing is uh, Jason Whiteman uh, reached out to me. I think I think it's later this week. I need to go back and check. There's a meeting. I think he scheduled it for billings, but there's a Zoom option also. Uh, he, I think It's he, like the 17th, I think. Oh, it's the 17th I, I now? Okay. We, we just got some stuff. Okay, I'll go back and check. But um, I guess the reason I mentioned that my only partial involvement is that I've been on some I've been in some uh, calls with him and and water resources out of the region, Kevin Bradley and then Jeannie Whiting. Um, you know, a lot of that has revolved around around this um, excuse me advisory committee for for Tongue River Dam that's in the, the tribe's water compact. So I just told them to be supportive in that. But excuse me, that's all I had uh, for now. 
I just have a couple questions. Um, so these lots back here, I just wanted to ask who is responsible for trespassing the squatters that back here? Yeah. Where at? Is it is it our responsibility or is it the bureau's responsibility? What we're at, Councilman? Behind the Boys and Girls Club and we are. We're responsible. Okay. I think we need to prioritize that. Okay. Last year and I gave I think I gave you a call. You did the the federal marshals back here. The safety of the kids that walk back and forth and just the kids that are at the club in general. Okay. And then with the LIDAR training, what day was that? I think it's next Tuesday. On the 9th. And it'll be here? Can I get that? You remember they... LIDAR training, as far as like, and I, I did ask you this before, but... Um, as far as the requirement of having a federal, I mean, a um, certified surveyor, how will the BIA adjust or how can we um, adjust everything to um, be able to use technology for like sites or land descriptions? Okay. Are we the only agency that requires a certified, or is no, it the it's region? Just, it's the only region is the Rocky Mountain region. They're the only ones that have that requirement. And it's a policy. That's why we keep asking and asking, why can't that be reversed? Yeah. No, why? Why are we, our region is required? Well, they, the thought then was that those people that graduated with a degree in surveying, that they didn't know enough about Indian lands. And so they had to have this extra class to learn how to um, assess tribal or federal lands. And so they needed to go, to go to training and they had to have that requirement before BIA would accept any survey that came in. But everywhere else, they accept a regular surveyor's notes and their maps, and they move on. Here, just having that additional requirement, our appraisals went from $400 to $1,200. It, and around here, I mean, people can't afford that. But it would be something that we should, all the tribes now, because those people that were pushing it and implement it, they're gone now. But it's something that we should we should be talking about and trying to get that decision reversed. So. But I have a couple of questions for uh, Ernest and for Serena. I don't know who the supervisor is, but what's the status of that Rosebud Lodge? Um, <clears throat> she was trying to, oh, they got, um, they got, smoke damage to it, um, something, uh, I think some kind of plastic around the furnace or something, um, it started on fire. Um, there was two, um, what do you call those, studs that burnt, that kind of started burning. And, um, but there wasn't much fire damage to the shelter, but uh, it was smoke damage. So. She was trying to look for a place um, to put it for to put the lodge temporarily, and um, she hasn't been able to find anything yet. But she would, would she doesn't want to lay off her employees um, because she has a hard time hiring them. Um, so she wants to try to keep them on, and I've been trying to help her find a. a, a a temporary place for them to have that shelter. So are you her supervisor? Or she, okay. And then my next question is, um, do you have a recommendation on the IHS, IHS letter declining our pre-award? Um, not yet, but I think I'll, um, I will give um, the area director a call and see what um, recommendations he has. 
Thank you. Andy, maybe we can just send you a list of areas that we would like you to prioritize sure. trespass. Okay. We'll try to research on our side and see. Okay. I know we've, we've, we're trying to address some like with livestock and um, this one, you know, I know, I remember when you called me, we initially, Richard and I went out uh, that same day that that happened, but <coughs> to follow up and yeah, we, through with the trespass. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about is that if you trespass them, then we can come in and help clean it up and okay. remove remove those. Okay. Down trailers or whatever. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Motion to Yeah. Yes, sir. Motion to adjourn by Melissa Lombear, second by Melissa Fisher. Melissa Lombear? Yes. Gorno? Ernest Littlemouth? Yes. Roy Davey? Yes. Donovan Limberhand? Yes. Silver Little? Yes. Gordon Spotted Horse? Yes. Melissa Fisher? Yes. Yes, motion carried. I don't know if they forwarded the invite. There's hardly anyone up there.